on this week's show. Board Game Geek wants your votes, Netflix wants your views, and Sauron wants your soul. Hello and welcome to the Fancy News Show from the Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boiter and this is your weekly fix of Fancy News. But first we do have some sad news. Co-founder of Game Designers Workshop, Lauren Wiseman, has passed away last week. The legendary game designer actually died on the 15th of February due to a heart attack. Wiseman co-founded Game Designers Workshop with uh, Frank Chadwick. Rich Banner and Mark Miller way back in 1973 and they published Eagles which was his first war game through the company in 1974. His main role was to obviously develop the games during that period. He also designed the war game, uh, and I, forgive me for the pronunciation of this, Farallas, Fal I knew I'd mess that up, Farsalas, Falsalas. Uh, I've, I hadn't heard of that game, as you could probably tell. And he also wrote the award-winning Twilight 2000 role-playing adventure, Going Home. He was obviously very well respected within the games industry, and he later worked for Steve Jackson Games as an art director. And obviously our thoughts and uh, best wishes go out to his friends and family. Three-time Oscar winner Colleen Atwood wins again. Costume designer Colleen Atwood has added a fourth Oscar for Best Costume Design for the fancy film Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This one wasn't a mistake. Eh? Eh? Topical. Yes. Although it's her fourth Oscar, it is actually the first Harry Potter-esque film, you know, set in the same universe, to actually win an Oscar, which is very surprising because none of the previous seven films have actually won any Oscar for anything. You would have thought it might have been for special effects, but no. First time that that has won. Atwood's three previous Oscars were for Chicago back in 2002, Memoirs of a Geisha back in 2005, and Alice in Wonderland in 2010. And this nomination brings her total nominations over the years to a total of 12. So she's obviously a very, very talented lady. So congratulations, Colleen. And you can see the full list of winners by visiting the Oscars website, as you could imagine, which is oscar.go.com. Which is a bit of a strange one. I think that's the official one. It looked official. That's oscar.go.com. And obviously we'll be putting all the links in the description of this episode. Voting for Board Game Geek 2016 Awards is now open. There are three sections open for voting with various different categories in each. The main one is obviously the board games, but they also do role-playing games and video games. And your votes are recorded immediately and they may be changed up to the time of voting, which closes at 11.59 p.m. CST. Don't know what that is. I think it's some sort of American time zone, isn't it? Central time something or other? Anyway, <laughs> that just shows how ignorant we are. Well, I am. I don't think Julian knew that anyway. Anyway, so it's the 6th of March that it closes midnight, so probably vote on the 5th and then you'll get your vote in. The final voting will be resolved using the Schultzel method, which they have a link to explaining uh, it, what that is on Wikipedia. Unfortunately, I didn't get time to look at it, so I'm quite curious to know what the Schultz method is of resolving the final voting. Uh, the voting is restricted to either supporting users, which means you've got a supporter badge from any year, and also voters who pay a one-time 20 geek gold fee or users who have purchased an avatar. So this is kind of for people that regularly use Board Game Geek and contribute, or you can just kind of dip in and pay them to vote, I guess. Sounds a bit dodgy. I'm sure it isn't. Anyway, if you'd like to vote, then you can find out all the details on their website by visiting boardgamegeek.com and search for awards 2016. And I'll put a direct link into the description as well, so you don't have to go to there and search. I must admit, it's not massively clear, their website. The navigation on it is a little bit wonky. But so yeah, so I'll put the direct link. The first trailer of Netflix urban fantasy film Bright 
aired during the Oscars, not the whole film, obviously just a little teaser trailer for it. It stars Will Smith and it's directed by Suicide Squad director David Ayres and is written by Max Landis. And the estimated $90 million budget film will be shown in December 2017. The story is set in a world where mythical creatures such as orcs and elves live side by side with humans. Imagine that. Sounds good already. Uh, a human cop, Will Smith, is forced to work with an orc to find a weapon everyone is prepared to kill for. The teaser trailer doesn't give too much away. It's very moody. I really liked it. It's kind of it, it's setting it up nicely, which I guess is what the whole point of a teaser trailer is. Um, it does look very gritty. I do like the looks of this. It looks like it's a kind of adult twist on urban fantasy, which over the years has kind of been dominated by young adult novels, you know, the adaptations such as Twilight, which is, you know, which is fine. This one looks a bit more adult and a bit more gritty, so there'll probably be heavier and grittier themes to this film. And you can see the trailer, obviously, if you want to, at YouTube. And again, I'll put the link in the description. Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment and Monolith have officially announced Middle Earth Shadow of War with a new cinematic trailer. This is the hotly anticipated sequel to the 2000, uh, yeah, 2014 title, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor video game. And like the first game, Shadow of War is set between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. And it's gonna be, uh, it will be, what have I put here? It will be, oh yes, it will be picking straight off where the last game left off, if you see what I mean. So there's not gonna be much time since the previous game in terms of storyline. Uh, there's a new there's a new ring that's being forged. That's basically the, the, the premise to this one. Now the trailer does show a whole host of uh, fantastically cool beasts in battle, such as a Balrog, the Nazgul, and of course thousands upon thousands of orcs. There will be three different editions, standard golden, yes you've guessed it, mithril, each with varying different content. The game does look fantastic, it looks really, really good. Massive, epic, sweeping battles, beautiful cutscenes by the looks of it as well. Middle Earth Shadow of War will be released on the 22nd of August this year on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and of course PC. And you can see the trailer, if you like, on YouTube. The live action role play event LARPCon is back. Yes, the weekend is packed with traders, events, and the UK LARP Awards 2017. The various activities include Starship Bridge Simulator, Escape Room, Talks from a LARP Experts, Poker Tournament, that's on a Friday night, <laughs> I'm not sure how that's LARP, but there you go, obviously people like poker as well. Combat Tournaments, uh, Wrestling Show, <laughs> with over the top, including over the top rope Regal Rumble. <laughs> Again, I'm not 100% sure what sort of wrestling it is, LARP, uh, actual LARP running events as well, and a fully qualified insured crash, which I think is very thoughtful of them, and of course the UK LARP Awards. And all the LARPing fun takes place over the weekend of the 4th and 5th of March at the Hermitage Leisure Centre in Whit, uh, Whitwick in Leicestershire in England. And you can find out more and book your ticket if you'd like to go at larpcon.co.uk. The Dryad and Forest Fairy Ball and Festival returns to Glastonbury for their 2017 spring party. The theme is Dryads and Forest Fairies, Green Men and Fawns. So if you're thinking of dressing up, that's what you should be going for. There is music from Harmony Glen and Professor Elemental. <laughs> I love that name. Hello, my name is Professor Elemental. Pleased to meet you. Hmm, that's, I love that. Anyway, uh, entry to the daytime fair is free with children and families welcome. So it looks like it's fun for all the family. There'll be lots of lovely stalls apparently with guest artists Brian and Wendy Froud of the Dark Crystal f uh, fame. Brian, tr fantastic artist, did lots of stuff with Jim Henson. Uh, also is going to be there is Anne Sudworth, Terry English, and there's going to be more announced soon. Better be soon, because it's this weekend. Anyway, uh, all the fun takes place on the 11th and 12th... No, not this weekend, it's next weekend, sorry. <laughs> all the play takes place on the 11th and 12th of March at the Glastonbury Town Hall in Glastonbury in England. To find out more and to book your ticket, you can go to fairyevents.com or you can go to their Facebook page 
And again, I'll put the link in, but if you just search for the Dryad and Forest Fairy Ball, or even just Dryad may get you there, or Dryad Ball or Fairy Ball. But I'll put the link in for your convenience. Kickstarter news, Thunderstone Quest from AEG is the new version of the classic deck building game Thunderstone Advance. It's back. Thunderstone Advance was hugely popular and very well received from the critics. It's now out of print and, and prices for it second hand are ridiculous, like 150 quid. Really, really, you know, it's a fantastic game. It's one of these sort of sought after games when it goes out of print. Um, and they've, AEG have announced a new version uh, designed by Mike Elliott and it's on Kickstarter right now. For those of you that haven't played the game, it's a deck building dungeon crawl game for two to four players where you collect cards from the marketplace uh, within the game to then upgrade your fighters for ready for when you actually go into the dungeon and then do some fighting. It's, it, it, this, I'm pretty sure it came out after Dominion and Dominion was an amazing game and it came out very revolutionary. This kind of built off of that, so it added the fighting dungeon aspect to it. And believe you and me, I managed to get a second-hand copy for not too exorbitant price and we played it and we absolutely loved it. I was going to do a review of it, but I thought, well, what's the point? Because it's out of print now and I'll just frustrate people. But obviously, we can do a review of this. The new quest system is a modular adventuring experience, so the game is always fresh and challenging. Plus, there are three quests in this campaign, so it's now got a sort of campaign quest feel to it. You get one quest with the adventure reward, which is the cheaper of the rewards, and three quests with the champion reward. Thunderstone Quest uses a lot of the previous rules from Thunderstone Advance, but the, the, the actual cards aren't gonna be compatible. So if you do want to play it, you will need to buy this, you know, the actual game. I am so excited by this game because I absolutely, as I say, I love Thunderstone Advance. So there we go, it is, oh yes, it's smashed its record, it's already funded and it finished on the 25th of March. Champion of Midgard from Fox, uh, sorry, Grey Fox Games is getting not one, but two expansions. The Dark Mountain expansion and Valhalla expansion have been long awaited. It's like bus, isn't it? You wait ages for one and two turn up. The base game of Champions of Midgard came out in 2015 and was hugely popular. And the game is a middleweight game, it's Viking themed, it's worker placement with dice rolling, where players have to then take charge of Viking leader clans who then travel to go and fight monsters, you have to kind of defend your village, lots going on in the game, nautical beasts in there. The Dark Mountain expansion actually adds a fifth player, which was you know, apparently one thing that everybody had been asking for, and a host of brand new enemies to defeat, journeys to uh, travel to, sorry, yeah, journeys to go on, I should say. And there's also a new archer dice, so instead of, I think it's, uh, I can't remember what it is now, but anyway, there's a new archer dice, so you can, that helps out you in the fights. The Valhalla expansion adds new mechanics in the form of new resources to manage, secondary leader abilities, which will be interesting, and the leader dice, which joins the battlefield. Ooh. And these expansions do look great. As I say, I absolutely loved Champions of Midgar when it came out. We, did, we have got a review of that, so you, if you want to find out how to play the base game. In fact, they put it, very kindly, put it up on their campaign page. So you scroll right down to the bottom, where you can see all the different other reviews as well, and we're there as well. So if you hadn't checked that out, check us out, a and maybe the others as well. But, but check us out first. Check Anyway, this one has also smashed its target, and it finishes on the 15th of March. Namesake, Volume 3, is the third book in a fairy tale fantasy webcomic by Isa and Meg. Namesake is a story of Emma Crewe, who is a woman who discovers she is a namesake, a person with the power to travel to other worlds, places we know on Earth as fantasy and fairy tale lands. But the power has rules. Alice's always go to Wonderland, Wendy's always go to Neverland, you get the picture. So each namesake has a specific destination and mission in order to keep the multiverse balanced. Really love this concept. The thing is with this one, Emma goes to Oz and she shouldn't have done. There's no Emmas in Oz and of course that causes all sorts of chaos. Namesake has been published online for the past six years with five books available digitally and two in print. And this core namesake team is comprised, as I say, as Isa, she does the story in art, and Megan does the story in design. It's, uh, you can actually buy it as a print, it's going to be 180 pages long, 
and it's available in both soft and hard cover. The art look, artwork does look amazing, looks really good and I absolutely love this concept. It's already funded and the campaign finishes on the 16th of March. Bottled Imp News, we have a new competition giveaway which has been running now for the past number of days and it's specifically for you lovely imps. Yes, we've teamed up with Mage Company Games to give you a chance to win 12 Realms base game plus the first edition expansion Ghost Town. There's still time to enter, it does finish today at midnight, not 11.59 or 11.59, anyway today which is the 7th of March, no the 1st of March, I'm getting ahead of myself, I've already written next week's news now, 1st of March which is Wednesday, the 1st of March, so it finishes at the end of play today, so you've still got a little bit of time, go to our Facebook page and you'll see the pinned post and that's got all the details of how to enter, so good luck. And on this week's Friday Fantasy Show I'm going to be taking a look at the last expansion to be reviewed for Talisman. It's another mini, 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 mini expansion by John New, and it is the Nether Realm. So that'll be the complete fourth edition Talisman and the expansions all reviewed for you lovely, lovely imps. But that is all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the fancy news. Please spread the news if you know anybody that would be interested in this content. Let them know. Until next time, fellow imps, keep it unreal, especially the news.